Do you think Jesus could do anything right here in Las Vegas, Sin City? I believe that what God is doing is he's created an eternal testimony. And what we know is when we can come together under a spirit of unity, nothing will be impossible. Hey, Las Vegas, welcome once again to another episode of Las Vegas United. I'm your host, Aaron Pino, and I'm so incredibly glad that you have decided to join us on this week's episode. I have a good friend of mine on the show today, but before I introduce her, I want to let you know about this show. On this show, we are partnering with God to create an eternal testimony of His goodness, mercy, and power right here in Las Vegas. Psalms 133 says this, how good it is for us to dwell together in unity for there is the commanded blessing of God. And I don't know if you realize this or not, but God is blessing our city. He's sent many people to come and partner with him to transform Las Vegas. And that brings me to our guest today. Would you help me welcome my good friend, Vanessa Diaz? What's up, Vanessa? Hey, Pastor Aaron. Thank <laughs> you so much for having me here. I'm so blessed to be here. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm so glad you're on the show today. So um, Vanessa, she goes to our church here locally, yes. Overflow Church. Ooh. Shout out to Overflow. <laughs> um, We're so appreciative to have you there at church. But anyway, tell us a little bit about yourself. So I actually work for the state of Nevada. I work for the Bureau of Behavioral Health, Wellness, and Prevention. But besides that, um, a large passion of mine is to be helping the community out and just being in the streets of Las Vegas. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. You know, one thing that, that you've helped us out at our church is kind of our own outreach and community engagement with Overflow. Uh, a couple months right. ago, we had, uh, what is it, Overflow Harvest Cosecha, is that how you say yeah. in Spanish? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we had a great time. You helped put that together. You know, you've you've helped us really reach hundreds of people that day, and that was our first one. So the best is yet yeah. to come. So amen. I just want to, yeah. amen. So I just want to, you know, right off the bat, just tell you thank you. Ashley and I, we appreciate you. We're so grateful to have you in our community, at our church, uh, to be able to call you a friend. Yeah. Um, we just Thank think you. the world of you. We, t we talk about you in our house some <laughs> quite often, actually. Like, man, but that's just so legit. <laughs> so, um, Thank you, Pastor Aaron. Thank yeah. you. You know, I appreciate you both as well. You guys have been such a... Uh, a blessing in my life and really uh, allowing me to even um, use the passion that God has placed in me for your church has been a great blessing. Yeah. yeah. And one, one of the reasons why I wanted you to bring you on the show, not just because what you've helped Overflow do, but also your love for Las Vegas. Right. And mm -hmm. I love the fact um, that you are a feisty Latina woman and I've gone yes. out into the streets with you, you know, <laughs> done ministry with you. Yeah. And one thing I love about you is like, you were just bold, bold, bold. Like you're, you're a stick of dynamite. You're small in appearance, but man, <laughs> in the spirit, yes. you just go after them devils and you just, you just say, Hey, look, I don't care what you're going through right now. Jesus right, is here right. for you. So I like, <laughs> Oh yeah, this is going to be a great show today. So tell us a little bit about like what you have going on here locally in Vegas. Yeah, so um, I actually have been doing ministry with uh, Leonard and Janice, who have their own ministry called Waterway and the Las Vegas House of Prayer. So yeah. um, after walking with them for a while, man, they've they've blessed me in such amazing ways where they've allowed me to grow, to experiment and just keep on uh, pouring into me and the passion that God has had for me. So um I've shifted into this place of doing, focusing on outreach ministry through uh, Waterway in the Las Vegas House of Prayer. Mm -hmm. And we've called that outreach ministry Mere Vessels. Um, so with that, um, that kind of came from a place of me just having this desire to yeah. uh, reach reach the communities and just being in Las Vegas, being um, praying for people, laying hands on people, healing the sick in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Um, and but really, it's uh, overall coming from a place of wanting to even see the church wake up. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see my generation get this fire, this passion for Jesus. Um, and I just want to be a place where it's like, hey, this is a safe place to go out, yeah. pray for people. Um, see some some awesome miracles and see uh your faith rise yeah i think i think it's so i i, I think it's amazing because yeah. i've gone out with you uh before on one of the on the, one of the outreaches i forget right. what the title of it was but we get there we worship for a little bit before yeah. we go out we pray and then you get up and just say hey all right guys we'll partner up with the team we're yeah. going out in the community and we're just going to go pray for people. Right. And, you know, we have Leonard and Janice coming on one of our shows later on. Right. Um, 
And it's based out of the Las Vegas House of Prayer, which is right. off of Twain and Swanson. Yeah. Um, right. We had Pastor Hatch on the show a couple weeks yes. ago, which was amazing. We love Pastor Hatch. Yeah. Um, but that area, Twain and Swanson, there's a lot of ministry that can take place there, Twain and Swanson. Yes. <laughs> and so whenever we, whenever you, you just said, all right, partner up, we're going to go out, we're going to pray for people. I was in your group yeah. and um, we got to pray for you. We saw miracles on the street. Right. Yeah. We saw people um, be touched by the power of Jesus on the street. Yeah. Uh, and it was so so awesome. So talk to me a little bit about how, how did the heart for the community right. affect you? How did it come to you? Like, what did that look like? So um, having this heart for the community just came from this place of uh, diving in to the word of God and just seeing how the mandate that Christ gave us was like, hey, go out, preach the gospel, preach the gospel until the ends of the earth, uh, hear my name, you know, hear the uh, the gospel and stuff. So um, it came from this place of having this desperation. It, it almost felt like, like a river in me that cannot be contained, mm. a fire in me that cannot be contained where I couldn't uh, suppress uh, Jesus. I couldn't suppress Holy Spirit. I had to make sure that people around me knew him. Um, and I wanted to see my friends get the, this, the same kind of passion, you know? So, uh, that's kind of the place where, where it was birthed that, where it was like, you know what, like, let's, let's go out, let's go do something. Mm -hmm. Let's go let, let people know about Jesus. And, uh, we just gathered together, started praying and, um, and that's where it kind of, it just got, got birthed from a place of prayer and, um, having this passion for the community there. Yeah. So yeah. that, so whenever you, whenever you had that, like, I can't, I can't suppress Jesus. We just got to get out. Like practically, what did that look like? I mean, cause here's, here's the reality. There's a lot right. of people watching who feel like they should do something, right? Yeah. They should, they should be a part, get involved in the community. They should go and witness to somebody. They should go do yeah. something, but they don't know how to start. So right. what did that look like for you so to get started? For me, it actually started with, um, one, being around people who uh, were more mature in the walk than I was, uh, but also mm -hmm. that, that can show me obedience, but that can also show me obedience in action because the book of James talks about our faith being placed into action, right? So what does that look like in our daily lives? Um, so really understanding and grasping what James was trying to communicate uh, was, hey, like, I can say that I believe in Jesus, but if I have no faith, mm -hmm. my faith is dead, yeah. you know? So, so let me show you my faith through my works, right? So, so I surrounded myself with people that had that same kind of mentality, like, hey, um, Jesus is speaking to me right now. Let's go to Walmart. Let's go pray for people. Yeah. Um, so that's how I actually started immediately. I, I made sure that the people around me um, had that same kind of uh, walk with God where they yeah. wanted to be put the active effort into doing that. Once I did that, I started harvesting even my own desire and my own confidence mm. to do it on my own and then bring people with me. Yeah. So then, and that's kind of like the concept of discipleship in a way, right? Yeah. Where it's like, hey, uh, I've just been discipled and taught how to walk with God in this radical faith um, and be bold. And now uh, let me go do that and bring people along with me. Yeah. So so that was my first step. And uh, that would probably be what I would what I would tell you, hey, if you're if you're walking around, you know, wanting to grow your faith, join me. Yeah. Join join communities that are doing uh things actively for, for Las Vegas. Yeah, absolutely. And whenever you were talking, it reminded me a few years ago, um I was we're me and Ashley were ministry. We're yeah. in uh, in the Chicagoland area. And we wanted to go back to Texas. That's where our family live. I grew up here in Vegas. We moved away. To, I moved away to Texas. Then I land up in Chicago and we we're trying to get back to Texas where our family was. Right. And there was a church there that was, um, inviting me to be a part of their staff. Well, this church was, uh, now it's become normal to me, but at the time it seemed a little bit radical, you know, right. like they loved yeah. Jesus. They were there like speaking in tongues and, you know, laying hands on the sick, casting out devils. And I talked to one of my mentors, my mm -hmm. father-in-law, actually, we've had him on the show as well. And I told him, I said, Dale, like, I don't feel like I'm as spiritual as these people. I'm a little right. intimidated to go hang out with them. And he gave me a key that I've, that I've used for, for my, my life since. And it was get around people who are at a higher level yes, than you. Absolutely. And it will always cause you to go to a higher level in your own personal walk. 100% agree. And um, that's why, and you know, I, the people who I do ministry with are, 
I always seek to have somebody that can feed me, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like there's there's always going to be somebody who is more mature than me, has more experience than me. And I have to honor that. I have to recognize that and I can learn from that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's having this position, having this posture of heart where you're always in a learning, uh, learning yeah. position and um, putting what you learn into practice, not just keeping it in, you know, yeah. not just having it be a concept, having it be like a verse. No, no, <laughs> putting it into practice. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, you you see the fruit of that. You see so much fruit of that. And and I kind of, you know, I, I have a couple girls from the church as well that yep. that um that I've brought, you know, with along with me to to walk this awesome walk of ministry, yeah. you know, and I told them the same thing. Hey, like we always need somebody um, that can pour into us. And it, and it's kind of like this picture of um, of like a, a, a vessel pouring into another vessel. That vessel overflows yeah. and it pours into another vessel. Yeah. You know, yeah. overflow. So. Watch out now. Watch oh, yeah. out now. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true, though. You know, James, like how you said, James, faith without works is dead. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I like how you said, you know, you have all the stuff. But you just got to let it out. You yeah. have to put it into practice. Right. And, you know, at church, I tell people all the time, like, we weren't saved just to warm a seat. Exactly. We have to yeah. get out and transform our sphere of influence. Right. Yeah. And so what's really cool about you is you have a broad sphere of influence. You know what I mean? Uh, and I love the fact that God has people um, in places and positions within our state who are spirit-filled believers. Right. Who yeah. love Jesus and who love people. Yeah. Um, and so God's allowed you to use your sphere of influence to impact people with the kingdom of heaven. I think that's Amen, yeah. incredible. Yeah. So um, let's let's talk about this a little bit more, okay? Because yeah. I know you do have some some girls that you're pouring into that you're discipling and bringing them along. What would you say to somebody who's maybe a little intimidated yeah. to to start coming around and stepping out? Because I totally get the idea right. of. Just come on, just come on and hang out and we'll, we'll help raise you up. But there is for some people a level of intimidation. So right. what would you say to somebody who, who is maybe a little bit intimidated about coming out? Right. I think, um, pushing past your comfort zone. Mm. Um, I think having that boldness, having the courage in Jesus name mm -hmm. to push past that comfort Jesus. zone, you know, because we're not, the Holy spirit resides in us and something so holy that, um, is supposed to be let out, right? Like the, the Holy Spirit wants to consume us and consume the people around us, consume our atmosphere, yeah. you know? And um, it is intimidating. Man, the first time I prayed for somebody, my voice was shaking. I was stumbling <laughs> over my words. I, I couldn't find the words, but the Spirit of God moved through my words that were stumbling. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's how I can say like, that was not me. It wasn't my words that held the power. Mm -hmm. It was the Holy Spirit, right? It was the Holy Spirit that was released through me, you know, and, yeah. and each and every one of us that are saved carry that Holy Spirit and, and we have the power to release him. We can yeah. release him, you know? So for somebody who's intimidated, you know, I would just encourage you push past your comfort zone. Um, we're not called to live a life that's comfortable. Mm -hmm. We're not, we're not called to live a life that's safe. Right. Living a life that's safe is not going to grow your faith. Mm. Um, you know, and Ooh. yeah, you just got to put, you got to put it all on the line for Jesus. Like lay down your life for your friends. What does that look like? Mm -hmm. Love your neighbor. What does that actually look like? Practically, you know, it's pushing past your comfort yeah. zone. Um, especially in today's society we're, we're, we're totally taught to, um, just stay back and stay in our own little circle, our own little clique, right. or even just by ourselves. Like it's become so normal, uh, but that removes the importance of community for us and, and what the purpose of it. Yeah. You know, living a life that's safe will yeah. not build your faith. Oh yeah. my goodness. Come on. <laughs> Have you ever thought of that? You wrote that down. You tweeted I did that. Not. You, oh. <laughs> I did not, but I will. <laughs> I'm about to, don't be surprised if I talk about that on Sunday. Okay. <laughs> Come but on. But it's true though. Like laying your life down for your brother, it is getting past your comfort zone because yeah. when we actually have a deep love for our neighbor, yeah, we realize that without Jesus, they're going to hell. Right. Right. Yeah. And so if we love them, we have to get past our uh, our security and saying, oh my gosh, what if I step out and they, they reject me? What if right. I step out and I don't have the right words to say? What if I step out and nothing happens? Right. You have, if you love them enough, right. you have to step out and tell them. If, if I see someone 
standing in front of a train and it's coming down the tracks, yeah. listen, I'm going to push you off yeah. the train. And I might have to be uncomfortable getting on the train tracks and dragging you off myself. Right, right. But in the end, I'm saving your life. Right. And um, hey, I just, yeah. I, I think that's. Uh, mm. Yeah. Love is a sacrifice, right? Like love is sacrifice like that. Um, living a life of sacrifice for our friends, for Jesus above everyone else. But, but that's what love is, you know, and, um, and that's what we see in the, in the gospel. Like we're called to, to, to walk this walk of living sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, it really comes down to loving others, um, unselfishly Mm -hmm. without, thinking about what we're going to gain without thinking or worrying if we're going to get rejected without uh, hearing, you know, if we hear a no from somebody, Hey, that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. Don't give up. Mm -hmm. You know, don't, don't, don't feel like, Hey, this is going to happen each and every time. No, like push past those thoughts, push past that fear and let uh, God's boldness just move Mm. through you because it's available. It's available. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I feel the boldness and the strength of God right now yeah. in the studio. This is amazing. Um, you're right. You know, I've, I've talked with people before in the past and we're, we are, um, our function in ministry. Obviously we have a lot of different, like right. for me personally, I have a lot of different roles. I connect with a lot of different pastors, everything yeah. like that. But one thing at the core of my foundation is the prince of God and a value for the supernatural yes. power of God. Yeah. Signs, wonders, miracles, casting yeah. out devils, laying hands on the sick, watch them recover. Right. And so, I've taught people how to lay hands on the sick yeah. and pray for healing for people. Come on. And yes. I get questions sometimes where people say like, well, what if, what do I do if I step out and nothing happens? Yeah. And I understand that's a mentality in people's mind, right. but I tell them like this, what if you step out and something actually does? Yeah. What yeah. if you actually got past your fear yeah. and you were obedient to the voice of God and you laid hands on somebody to be healed and God actually heals them? Well, yeah. guess what? You just were uh, instrumental in re- releasing heaven right. on earth. Yeah. And so we have to get past our fear exactly. if we're going to enforce the kingdom of heaven Amen. Yes. in our city. Amen. Amen. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Vanessa Diaz, my goodness. You stirring <laughs> me up, girl. I'm sitting here Come and I'm on. just like. Let's go right now. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. You know what I mean? Let's go right now. Yes. <laughs> well, what's really cool is people actually do have an opportunity um, yeah. to go out practically with you. So it's not yeah. just something you talk about. It's something that you really do. Yes. So talk to me a little bit about Mere Vessels. Yeah. So Mere Vessels was like this ministry, ministry that was birthed. Um, just kind of in this place of wanting to go to the streets of Las Vegas and lay hands on people, see miracle signs and wonders, deliver people, just pray for salvation. Um, so we do that and we put it into practice every month. Um, so every month we're going out, I, I get um, anybody can join, yeah. whether you're a new Christian, even if you're a non-believer, I mm-hmm. invite you to come That's right. and, and see the power of God uh, before your eyes, you know, and, um, so everybody on each spectrum can come, you know, and join us. We worship, uh, and we just wait for God to move and, and lead us, you know, we're, we're praying for people. Um, and we're seeing people's legs grow out. Yeah. We're seeing people's backs healed. We're seeing, um, people come to Christ. People come up to us and ask us for prayer, ask us for Bibles, you know, and that's the spirit of God drawing them to yeah. himself. Amen. And yeah. all we did, like, I'll be honest, Pastor Aaron, I don't think it's all that special. I think all yeah. I did was say yes to God. I think the people who are walking and doing this, all they're doing is saying yes to God, making themselves available. Mm. Um, and that's, that's all it really is. That's the, that's the cool part. Like, it's not me like, I have the gift of prophecy, right, you know, right, it's right. not that, you know, <laughs> like, like it's not me doing that. Yeah. It's really just me saying yes to God and giving Holy Spirit the space to move in that moment. And so um, once a month, we dedicate a night um, to just allowing Holy Spirit to move openly in the yeah. middle of Twain and Swanson uh, in the middle of that parking lot and just letting God move. And we're seeing a lot. 
So. Yeah. I love the fact, too, that you said um, it doesn't matter where you're at with your walk with, with yeah. God, even if you're an unbeliever. And I'll put one even further, even if you're not a part of Overflow Church, because this is even <laughs> an Overflow Church thing. Right, right. This is Las Vegas House of Prayer. So oh, it doesn't yeah. matter what church you're part of, Absolutely. what kind of ministry you're part of. This is for the whole city. Yeah. If you want to come out and practically learn yeah. how to be used by God, Go yeah. out to mere vessels because there uh, it'll stretch your faith. Yeah. Um, it'll it'll allow you to see things that you probably never even thought were possible right. to be seen by yeah. your two hands. I like to put it like this. You've heard me say this before. Yeah. Radical obedience Absolutely. is the gateway to endless testimonies. Amen. And that's what you just said right now. Like, yeah. like Pastor Aaron, I don't even feel that special. I'm just doing what God told yeah. me to do. And because of this. I'm seeing the testimonies of people being touched yeah, by God. Exactly. And and I like how you say radical radical obedience. Like that was probably the first thing I learned when when I I mean I got saved when I was in third grade. Mm. Uh but I didn't walk obediently. Mm. Right. So what is that it's so funny because I came from California uh to Las Vegas in 2016, I wanna say, mm -hmm. um, to finish my degree. But coming to the city of sin, I came here and I was saved in a new way. Mm -hmm. I was taught how to be obedient in this city. Um, and and that was the first principle I learned how important obedience is. And it honestly practically started with reading my word obediently. Mm. Then, then it became like, oh, hold on, Holy Spirit's tapping me on the shoulder to go pray for this woman and buy her groceries. Yeah, I did that, led somebody to Christ in the name of Jesus. And that's just glory to God, you know. And yeah. uh, so radical obedience is that's all it really is. That's how God can move. Yeah. Yeah. God is just looking for our yes. Yeah. Whom do our I send? Yes. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Who, yeah. Exactly. And what I, what's so incredible to me, you said, you know, the city is sin which I know we don't really call it that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I know people label that. Exactly. And like I'm I'm relabeling Las Vegas to God City. Yeah. Not Sin City, God City. Yep. You know, I know people SON say yeah, City. Yeah, SON City. Cuz here's the <laughs> here's the reality. Revelation says let the kingdoms of this world become the kingdom of yeah. our God, meaning there is a transformation that is taking place right. in the deepest, darkest places on the face yeah. of the earth. And guess what? Las Vegas is not going to be left behind. Exactly. Where sin abounds, grace abounds much more. And I, I myself encountered that. And it's so funny. When I came out here, my mom was so worried for me. She was like, please, <laughs> please do not go out there. Yeah. Are you sure? And I was like, no, mom. Like, I feel God sending me to Las Vegas. And when I came out here... Uh, my life was transformed. It was changed uh, because I felt this grace fall upon me, uh, this desire fall upon me to see uh, the captive set free. Mm -hmm. And I had I had to know how mm -hmm. I had to know how to do that. Yeah. Um, and and so I feel like that's what led me to, you know, all the things I've been doing in the name of Jesus and just yeah. uh, this whole mere vessels thing. Like I felt God just place that on my heart. Like, Hey, this season, I want you to really show people, teach people um, what being an empty vessel, but, but the word actually talks about being an honorable vessel of use mm. for God. Um, what does that look like? I want you to walk this out, but walk it out with others, not by myself. This is not for me. It's not, it's not so, Hey, Vanessa's doing this. You know, this is really like, Hey, let's get together, mm -hmm. do this for the glory of Jesus and watch him move because then we're going to keep on adding to the kingdom. We're going to keep right. on. Uh, and you're right. It's, it's for everybody. It's for every, across every denomination. If you love Jesus, like we're, we're mandated through the Bible to go preach it. Yeah, come on. So let's do it together. Come, come on. on. So if someone wants to get involved with Mere Vessels, how do they, yeah. what's the best way for them to um, do that? So what they can do is follow us on Instagram. It's Mere underscore Vessels um, at in, at Instagram. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll have we'll throw it up on the screen yeah. so people can can do that. Listen, I'm telling you, if you're watching this and you want to have your faith ignited and you want to be stretched. And see God use you to bring his kingdom to earth here in Las Vegas. You need to come out to Mere Vessels and right. you need to hang out with Vanessa. Because I'm telling you, this girl right here is a firecracker. I mean, she will, she's a <laughs> stick of dynamite. So don't let her fool you. She got like the like the little jacket on right got now. You know, the hair is all done. But listen, <laughs> when we hit the streets, I'm serious. When we hit the streets, it's 
amazing. It's right. powerful. And so you guys need to connect with Vanessa and Mere Vessels. Yes, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Pastor. And I, I'm so blessed to be on the show and just uh, to connect with you more. And I can't wait for yeah. all that God has for us. Yeah, the best yeah. is yet to come. Listen, Las Vegas yeah. and those who are watching, listening, thank you so much for joining us on this week of Las Vegas United. Hey, would you write us? Would you email us and let us know who you think we should have on the show? There's a lot of people doing amazing things right here in our city, and we want to know about it. We want you to know about it. So if there's anyone out there that you know who should be on the show, let us know. Write us. They're going to throw the email address down below. We want to want to come together underneath the spirit of unity and watch God transform our city for his glory. So thanks for watching this week of Las Vegas United, where we are partnering with God to create an eternal testimony of his goodness, mercy, and power. And don't forget, when we dwell together in unity, there is the commanded blessing of God. Vegas, we are blessed. You're blessed. Our city's blessed. And we just thank you so much for joining us this week on Las Vegas United. We'll see you next time. God bless. Hey, Las Vegas. Thank you so much for watching our show. We have two exciting guests next week. Pastor Jeremy and Lindsay Bosma from Avenue Church talk to Pastor Aaron about the mission and testimony of their church here in Vegas. Their heart for community is exemplified in the work their ministry does for people all over the city. They remind us the power of unifying, getting involved, and sharing hope with Las Vegas. This show premieres on Facebook and YouTube on Mondays at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You can also listen to our show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts, Mondays at 8 p.m. If you live in Vegas, you can watch our show on over-the-air television on Keen, Channel 17, every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 7.30 p.m. We hope you tune in. Our show is hosted by Pastor Aaron Pino of Overflow Church. To learn more about him and his ministry, please visit overflowchurch.co. The guest this week is Vanessa Diaz of Mere Vessels. For more information and ways to get involved, find them on Instagram at mere underscore vessels. For more information about Las Vegas House of Prayer, visit lvhop.org. Our show is directed by Javier Moreno. Production assisting by Julie Moreno. Edited by Javier and Jalen Moreno. Las Vegas United is produced by CTN Vegas, the Las Vegas location for the Christian Television Network. For more information about CTN Vegas and our show, please visit ctnvegas.com.